What's going on everybody? Brett here. We're jumping back into Kingdom Rush Frontiers. Alright, so let me bring you up to speed with what I did off camera. Basically, I went ahead and did the heroic mode challenges for these three levels. Um, and in doing so, I leveled the heck out of a couple heroes. Put, I think, two levels on Nivis. Two and a half levels. Got him some, uh, some of his skills are now maxed out. I got two levels on Deirdre. Um, she's still a bit weak. She's really only comes online, honestly, when she's maxed out. And in maps where you're going very heavily focused on your your barracks units. Which I was kind of hoping would be this level coming. But I think if we use her, it'll be a much tougher experience for her. I also leveled Mirage two levels. So she's now up to level 8. And her DPS is quite high. Uh, but for this coming level, I wanted to use... Uh, Nivis and I thought it mostly because it's quite thematic he's a bit of like a Gandalf character he even says some of his uh, lines from Lord of the Rings um, and this next level features the dwarves the dark descent uh, but before we do that by doing those three challenges I was able to unlock three more stars for us to get an upgrade so I'm gonna go ahead and get the courage upgrade and it says here while in combat soldiers and reinforcements regenerate health so we're going to take that, and then we only have Brilliance left. For every other Mage Tower built, each Mage Tower gets a bonus to damage. And that bonus to damage is quite substantial um, when, you start, when you start talking like four or five of them. Um, but I'm going to prioritize this mainly because of the level we're about to go into. And if I remember right, and I could also be wrong, uh, this level has a decent focus on uh, Barracks characters. So the Dark Descent gonna go ahead and read the campaign blurb for you guys we've almost run out of supplies morale is at an all-time low and some of our men have deserted luckily we bumped into a dwarven mining crew that dug too deep and have barricaded themselves against the saurians they promised to join us in finding our way out of this damned place our escape must wait as we and our newfound allies must repel the oncoming saurian horde so to battle and I found that deep and caverns old. Dungeons Deep and Caverns Old. Gotta love that quote. I love everything Lord of the Rings, guys. And I am a huge dwarf nerd. Uh, in Total War, they're like my favorite uh, race to play as. I could basically restart campaigns with them all day long. But um, I was going to say that I found Nivis' skill set is very good against the Saurians. He has lots of AoE. If he finds himself in trouble, he can just teleport out. So, okay. Obviously here we have three unique towers. They're unique to this level. I don't think they actually appear in any other Send them to any me. other map, which is a shame. I wish there was like a whole nother like dwarf class. Man, I would I would play a dwarf themed game so hard. Um, anyway, let's take a look at these towers and what they do. So they have a dwarf hall. The dwarves themselves have 220 HP, which is a decent amount, low armor. And decent damage so what you can do here is you can increase their armor to medium and then high you can increase their damage this is as light as a feather as hard as dragon scales and here you can a magic drink that regenerates or that grants super life regeneration for three seconds it says what's up so you can max these out and they become quite powerful and then here the dwarven bastions so increase range attack damage by 30 and there we have a, a full metal jacket quote. Um, yeah, I think I think it goes 30, 60, 90. So if you look at their damage, I mean, it's it's huge. And they can also have a powerful uh, AoE attack that they can do with an explosive keg. So we just need to think about how we can support them. And they also have this hero. What's his name? Uh, Rurin Longbeard. Longbeard still fight. So together, this is a nice little position for us. We could give them some more uh, barracks units. And maybe a bit of magic. That might not be bad. We could also place a Dwarven Bombard here and look to upgrade it to the Mecha. Uh, that might not be bad as well. But you'll, you'll see here, I'm seeing like these could potentially be climbing positions. I know for a fact that this is, and they may even come down from the walls. I haven't played this in a long time. I'm also looking at this here. I don't know if units come from this position. 
But uh, we need to start thinking about how we're going to defend our part of the map. And you'll see they have these little slopes here. If we had melee heroes, that might have a hard time getting back and forth between the lanes. But Nivis can just teleport instantly. We can be wherever we want to be. Alright guys, where do we want to build? We have a little three-way situation going on right here. So what do we want to put? I think we get ourselves a single barracks here. And I don't think there's any chance that we can upgrade an archer tower enough to hit these lanes. Um, that's almost certainly just not feasible. So what we may do... Do something like this. That far forward. Get Nevis here. Bullseye. And we can get ourselves some tribal axe throwers in this top position. And if people start to climb down, they'll be taking shots of them the whole way. Um, Might and magic. And I found the Necromancer Towers were very effective against them because it, it kills the low tier Saurians and makes skeletons me, that down. really clog up the battlefield for the high tier guys. And then maybe that's all we want to do for now. This position might actually be able to touch the bottom row here if we were to fully upgrade its range. But this would be a better spot because it would affect more towers. So lots of decisions here to make early on. Let's just get some fighters because we're going to want them anyway at some point. And move on. So the teleporting guys right off the bat. Let's make a little forward position here. Force them to teleport. There we go. Niva's doing work. And we're going to get some skeletons here. And we certainly want to call early. Make sure we're getting as much gold as possible. We'll probably drop fire on these dudes. It's nice that he's level 10. He does kind of a smash. Uh, I think it's like Malik was his name in the first game. And he does a smash that's very similar to that. These upgrades are so expensive. But I think we're going to get explosive keg on both of them. To give them some more AoE. And there we go, we'll drop fire for them. Let's upgrade that. There we go. And these dudes do so much damage, we need to put some, uh, some units on them. Drop some fire now. They are magic resistant, so our necromancer wasn't doing much against them. So how much is the increase? So yeah, it's just 30 and 30, but it gets much cheaper after you do it the first time. And they're great towers. We're going to want to upgrade them for sure. They're better than anything we're going to be able to put down there to help them. Love those magic missiles. They function very similar to the uh, the Dwarven Bombard's Mecha Upgrades missiles. Don't want to leak here. Let's go ahead and do that. We can give them a bit of help. And we just don't want to get teleported past. I think that's kind of the biggest danger that one of these dudes will just skip past us. And here we want a dwarf. I think we're doing fine. It'll be nice to get some mechas here. If, honestly, at this point in the game, if you want to cheese every single level, just build mechas and get the missile upgrade. Um, that's not really what I'm here to do. I'm trying to have fun. So I'm attempting to not cheese the level too hard. And we're going to have to pull our soldiers back here. Because the skeletons are forcing them to go invisible at kind of a strange time. 
and then they're going to reappear around this area here, and we'll be able to fight them in melee. There we go. We'll drop some fire, maybe get lucky with some of the random drops. Alright, that's way too many dudes walking past us, I don't like that. So what we'll do is we'll put these forward and we'll leave these back. And we can upgrade them pretty heavily if we want. I don't think we will, though. And we'll get an Art Mage Tower back there. And I can already tell as I'm playing a few things that may have been more optimal. Like, this could have easily been a an Archer Tower, Crossbow Fort. And it would possibly hit this tower. And also, if we upgraded it, we could increase the range of these two. It would be nice if this upgrade also increased the uh, the range of these towers, because that would be cool if they were able to fire up here. Yeah, we'll make this position quite strong. And I think what we want to do is clear this rubble, honestly, and give ourselves some, like, Crusaders or something uh, as another line of defense. We'll call early. Unfortunately, these dudes are going to be brutal against the dwarves. And if we're going to upgrade one, this is the one we want to upgrade because it has, it has the best range. Nice. Nivis is down here helping out against the air. Good man, Nivis. And we can get a twister. Yeah, I think here we're just going to get another Necromancer Tower. And maybe we'll unlock this and put a crossbow fort there. Nivis leveled. Wow, I didn't even see that. So he's level 9. He'll hit level 10 for sure. Lots of skeletons. And we don't care if you shoot at skeletons. Let's try this. Almost got it, there we go. And then we can increase the Falconer to level 3. And then we'll have some huge range on these. Wow, so much damage. He's definitely a glass cannon, that's for sure. But he's very well protected, standing amongst all these units. Almost got it. But yeah, you just can't you can't reach these levels. You just kind of have to support them the best you can. Give them good towers, give them good upgrades. Now we want to get this down here so that they have something else to shoot at. And they got them grouped up thanks to the twister and then we'll drop some fire on them. So no big deal. And then we'll get assassins so that they're invisible. So that the ranged units won't have a good target. Bring them in just a little bit there. Oh, and I forgot about this cave. So the big boys are coming out of the cave. Uh, but we did have some shots on them. Thanks to the necromancers. We'll just drop fire. Oh, and now we have the Saurian Savants. Who are summoning basically entire armies all by themselves. We can drop reinforcements on them, but honestly they... They'll just kill the reinforcements. They have 800 HP. They're really strong. We can bring Nivis. Try and do some damage. Oh, he disintegrated them. Oh, and he's going to be our first tier to level 10. So, excellent. Get some knights back here. We'll get a very thematic dwarven battle mecha here. Get some missiles. Oh, and Nivis got taken down while I wasn't paying attention. That is my bad. We'll drop some fire here. So we can get ourselves a few more roadblocks with these Death Riders. And they'll pump the... Uh, should have moved them again. God dang it. Um, and they'll pump these skeletons up so that they're actual damage dealers. 
Okay, we can put one back here. We're kind of neglecting to give the dwarves their mithril armor and stuff, but they're not really fighting as of yet. More important for us, certainly. Yeah, and I see you this time. Nevis, I'm not going to let you die again, buddy. No, and he died. And his book lands on his face. That's hilarious. Move the dwarves back just a little bit. Oh, and he went down. Oh, no. There we go. We'll get them out. Nivis is just stuck in a bad spot. But upgrading them with dodge as well as sneak attack is going to give them the damage hopefully that they need to kill this bad boy. Alright, Nivis, as soon as you resurrect, we're getting you out of there. Back somewhere where you can do some damage. And I think we need to get the explosive kegs to give ourselves a bit more AoE down here. As well as critical mass. Because we're getting overwhelmed because we're not able to deal with the uh, the casters in the back. I'm sure they're magic resistant, they surely are. Get down here, Nervous, we need you. Yeah, that confetti is him disintegrating enemies uh, below a certain HP threshold. It's a very powerful ability, and I think I have it maxed out at this point. Let's get some slowing there. And the dwarves, we'll give them medium armor, more HP, and now they have some regen. Uh, they'll be much more effective. just get that in a tornado. And he just gets gunned down. Whenever we see these types of guys coming, we may just want to move him out of the way. Let's make them stronger. Hopefully they'll be able to deal with the big bruisers. Unfortunately, the... Uh, Myrmidons, they eat your guys if they kill them. So they're able to heal themselves with that. We need just a bit more AoE. Let's get the, what are these called? Pestilence. And we'll have some more AoE to help deal with them. Another critical mass there. I think we go ahead and try and get another mech. We're on wave 14 of 15. We have not leaked. Made a couple of misplays with our heroes, but that was mostly kind of because we were messing around. Let's get that. That's very effective as well. Should always get at least one level of barrage. Could also get the totem of weakness here. And yeah, we still don't have furnace blast, but I don't think it's AOE is not really our problem. We'll get it because it does damage and it's a useful ability. Nice. We can drop some fire here. They're looking a bit too healthy. And their AoE allows them just to clear out pretty much any any barracks units that we could possibly put in front of them. We're gonna drop some fire right there. And that was a pretty that was a pretty devastating drop. Make sure we're spending our gold. Okay, anything left? Yeah, we want to get the dwarves fully upgraded. Nice. And here, we can go ahead and get whatever we want. Not sure it matters. It's the last wave, and I think we're doing okay. Unless we get overrun by these uh, savants. If they group up nicely, we'll drop some fire on them next. Multiples of that. Keep 
keeping an eye on them to see if we can't get them. There we go. We've got two of them grouped up. We should be able to take them out right there. That's a lot of units that will be summoned to fight us now. Increase the strength of Pestilence. Our dwarves are fully leveled. We'll take that. We'll take that. And they're not leveled at all. Oh, they just went down. We also have sought to get some kind of lower cooldown core drill, but it's a little late for that. And our dwarf lord goes down. We can make him much stronger. We might actually be able to stand up to them in melee now. Yeah, and they have no armor, just huge HP pools. Yeah, and they got disintegrated. We don't want Nivis in melee. Let's take him out and call that good. Get over here, man. Oh, we need help. We need help. Alright. We did it, guys. And that's going to be the three stars that we need for the upgrade. And we unlocked all of the rest of the heroes, guys. Oh my gosh, that feels so good. Let's fully upgrade that. That's such a strong ability. Oh yeah, we're fully upgraded. We can just upgrade everything. Absolutely. So, whew, and let's go ahead and get the brilliance. That feels good. And now, we're at Ember Spike Deaths. Um, it says it's the final battle against Lord Malagar. It's a tough one. It's a pretty cool boss fight, but there are going to be lots of other levels at the end of this that we can do. And they're going to be pretty fun and pretty thematic. I think we're going to use uh, Shatra for that level. Um, we'll test him out. It would kind of be cool to use Grawl. He's kind of the same crystals as they have here. But I think we'll use him. I've used Boneheart before. I used to have him. I've used all of these before, but I've never used Kaz or Saitam. And if I remember right, the dragons are kind of overpowered, honestly. They're fun, but they're a bit overpowered. You know what? Let's let's use Ashbite. Let's go into the next one. We'll bring Ashbite. Um, this guy is very like Protoss, kind of like Tassadar. Um, yeah, but we'll bring Ashbite. It should be a good time. I like the mobility that the dragons have. Let's take a look. We can take a look here for a second. Uh, we're not like out of time or anything. Let's check out his abilities and that way we'll know what they are going into the next battle. So he has Blazing Breath. Straight up some fire damage. We'll get one of those. Dives and feasts upon an enemy dealing 80 damage with a 20% chance of devouring it. We'll take that. It's like an insta-kill ability. Sends out a cloud of hot smoke that slows enemies, so he gets a nice AoE uh, slow there. Scorches the ground, melting all enemies with four explosions uh, of 30 damage each. So kind of like a mini Rain of Fire. And then Rain of Fire. So we'll take all of these guys. And we'll check them out a little bit more in the next video, but thank you so much for watching. I appreciate everyone here who's subscribed, who's following the channel. Uh, my name is Brett, my channel is Good Talk Gaming. Subscribe if you haven't already, like the video if you did enjoy it, and guys, I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.